Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. I do want to talk college hoops and I really just want to go ahead and update you on a story that we discussed actually last week on the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast. It surrounds the number one high school basketball player in America. Well, technically, there's I'll say this. I've labeled both Gigi Jackson and DJ Wagner the number one player in America. Depending on what recruiting service you look at depends on who they have ranked number one. We talked about DJ Wagner last week. Today, it's about Gigi Jackson, though. Number one high school player in the class of 2023 basketball-wise. And the last time we spoke about him, he had just decommitted from North Carolina, was committed to go to North Carolina, was going to play high school basketball this year, enroll at North Carolina in the spring of 2023. When he decommitted, though, what did we discuss? We discussed not only is he decommitting, but it appears as though we know what is going to happen next in his recruitment. And at the time, the buzz was that he was actually going to commit to South Carolina. He is from the city of Columbia, South Carolina. He was going to commit to his home state and his hometown school, and he was actually going to reclassify and enroll this summer to play this coming year in the fall. Well, on Saturday, it became official. Gigi Jackson announces that he is going to South Carolina. He will play this year. And I just want to kind of give some updated thoughts on that piece of news. And I also kind of want to share some thoughts because I saw a lot of people in the media, people that I respect and like say, say stuff like, well, this changes everything for North Carolina, for South Carolina. Uh, no, it doesn't. And I still definitely have my concerns both about the player and the school. And I don't think this fundamentally changes all that much for South Carolina. First of all, in terms of the kid and the player himself, look, what I would say, and I think if you guys and girls have listened to this show for long enough, you know that I am out of the tell people what to do business, okay? Um, I don't do it at NBA draft time. Oh, you should stay in school. Don't go pro. No, everybody's got to make what decision they deem best for them. Everyone has access to different information. Um, and it's the same with high school recruiting. I don't say it's a bad decision. It's a good decision. It's the right decision. It's the wrong decision. But what I would say about Gigi Jackson is what I said last week. It is not the decision that I would make if I was advising him because I do think as somebody who loves college sports, as somebody who loves college basketball, I do think that we have a pretty good track record that in general, decisions like this don't work out. And as I told you last week, this kind of there, there, there's really two things together that are happening here where we kind of have a history that says each of these things don't individually work out and you put them together and it could be bad, bad, bad news. Certainly, hopefully not for this kid, but I don't think, again, it, it changes much for South Carolina as a program. Now, the first thing that just kind of historically generally is kind of hit or miss, it's the whole idea of reclassifying. It's the whole idea of moving up your clock a year to enroll early in college, basically to skip your senior year of high school to come to college early. The reason people want to do it is because for some players, remember, you have to be one year removed from high school basketball and 19 years old to be eligible for the 2022, for, for, for the NBA draft the following season. And so in Gigi Jackson's case, by coming up a year, it allows him to be eligible for next NBA draft because he will turn 18 later this year, which means he'll turn 19 next year, which means that he'll be eligible for the 2023 NBA draft. That is why players reclassify. But as I repeatedly say on this show, reclassification is totally hit or miss. Now, there have been plenty of players that it worked out really well for, right? Carl Anthony Towns comes to Kentucky. He's probably the face of one of the best regular season teams we've seen in the history of college basketball at Kentucky. Marvin Bagley reclassifies. Fantastic player at Duke for a season. Duke goes deep into the NCAA tournament, goes to the Elite Eight, they lose to Kansas. So there have been success stories. Jalen Duran, I don't think he was drafted quite where he thought he would be or where most of us thought he would be. But he goes to college for one year. He has success. He ends up going in the top 15 of this previous NBA draft after playing last year at Memphis, after reclassifying it this time last year. 
There's also other guys, though, that let's be honest, it has not worked out for. Now, I think Gigi Jackson is a pretty talented guy, but there's plenty of guys that it has not worked out for. Amani Bates, for example. It just did not work. You don't need me to tell you everything that happened at Memphis. It was just not good. He's obviously got to come back. He's now at Eastern Michigan, and I think his career is really in the balance. Devin Askew, if you remember, was a part of 2021, reclassifies, come to Kentucky. It's a complete disaster. He is now on his third school in three years. Christian Lander, number one high school recruit at the point guard position, ends up reclassifying, going to Indiana. It doesn't work out. He transfers to Western Kentucky. I mean, even sometimes when it's not terrible, it's not what you think it's going to be either. There was a kid named Nico Mannion a few years ago. Oh, big hotshot high school player. Goes to Arizona, has minimal impact, uh, barely makes it, and now he's playing overseas about three years after he graduated. So it's totally hit or miss, but if you do look at most of the success stories, most of the guys that do have success are ultimately players that go to schools where there is talent around them. And this is the part that concerns me if you're Gigi Jackson. 17 years old as he gets set to go to South Carolina, And I just don't think most of these guys realize how tough college basketball is. And again, this isn't me criticizing. It's not me saying he made the wrong decision. What I am saying, though, is if you look at the history of players, even if you agree that the reclassification thing, he's not Devin Askew, he's not this, he's not that, he's really talented. The number of players who decide to do their own thing, take the uncharted path, and there's nothing wrong with it, But I don't think most players realize how hard it is to carry and elevate a program that is not Duke, Carolina, Kentucky, whatever. Just think about all the players through the years. Anthony Edwards is probably the success story, right? He goes to Georgia. It has no impact on his draft stock because he's awesome. But think about some of the other ones. Markel Fultz, complete disaster. Yes, he goes number one, but it was a disaster at Washington. Ben Simmons basically quits in the middle of the season at LSU. Those are the success stories of the guys that went, tried to do something different. They, it might not have hurt their individual stock, but they didn't win. There's other guys. Patrick Baldwin this past year was a top five recruit, commits to play for his dad at Milwaukee, is completely out of sight, out of mind, ends up being picked in the last few picks of the first round this year, but he's very much a developmental project, and I'm sorry. If he goes to Duke, he isn't fallen to 28-29 in the draft. McCour Maker, remember this was the kid a few years ago that went to Howard. How much did you hear about McCore Maker during that season or ever since then? You didn't. And this is the only point I'm trying to make is that it is really hard for any player to do this, and this is why I would not have advised him. Anthony Edwards might be one of the 10 best players in the not maybe not 10 best, but one of the 20 best players in the NBA right now. He's certainly one of the five most exciting. He couldn't get Georgia out of the basement in the SEC. Ben Simmons, I know it's kind of fallen apart since then. He put up historic numbers in college. It meant nothing at LSU. Markel Fultz was pretty good on the court at Washington. Washington finished in last place in the Pac-12. And so I just don't think these players know quite how hard it is. And so to bring it full circle, this is why I can't, like, get super excited about uh, about South Carolina this year, right? Like, there's this notion of, like, oh, this changes everything for South Carolina. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't at all. First of all, South Carolina wasn't, wasn't th- – th- there's a reason this whole situation is going down. Team Stunk, new head coach, why he committed to North Carolina in the first place was because he liked South Carolina under Frank Martin. They changed the coaching staff. He's more comfortable with Carolina. He gets comfortable with the new co- coaching staff at South Carolina. But this was a team that went 18-13 and 13 last year and was basically irrelevant in SEC play. I know they finished 500, but come on. What was your favorite South Carolina basketball moment from the last couple of years? Since they made the Final Four, it really doesn't exist. Well, that team has now lost its top six scores off a team that was 18 and 13. And they've added zero impact transfers. Listen, I have lists and lists and lists, data and data and data of all these transfers, who could be impactful, who isn't. I don't have a single guy in my top 50, top 75 of my my impact transfers that went to South Carolina. They got some decent players from some mid major from some high major places, Michi Johnson from uh, Ohio State, uh, Verdonk, the kid from Illinois. But they didn't add any real impact transfers, and they lost their top seven players off a team that didn't, top six scores that didn't make it the NCAA tournament last year or even come close. Forgive me for not believing that a 17 year old is going to go in and make 
like a major marquee difference. Now, maybe it means they go from being the least talented roster to, I don't know, 12th or 13th. But it's not all that much of a difference. I'll tell you this, forget the top of the league. I think South Carolina is significantly behind most of the middle of the league as well. I don't think they're anywhere close to what Todd Golden has at Florida this year. I don't think they're anywhere close to what Matt McMahon, the new head coach at LSU, has this year. I don't think they're anywhere close to even what Chris Jans, the new head coach at Mississippi State, has. Dennis Gates, the new head coach at Missouri, has added multiple impact transfers. And those are the the middle-of-the-pack teams in the SEC. I'm not even talking about Kentucky with the reigning National Player of the Year, Oscar Shibwe. Arkansas with six top 100 recruits headlined by three McDonald's All-Americans. Um whatever, uh, Auburn with, with the talent that they have, Tennessee with the talent that they have, Alabama, I could go on and on. And so this idea that it changes expectations, it's out, no, it doesn't. It makes them more interesting. We'll probably watch them for a game or two because we want to see this kid play. I know from my perspective, because I cover these sports, because I have to talk about the NBA draft, because I have to talk about these kids in so many different lights. Yeah, I'll pay attention. I'll watch them. I'll see them. But this doesn't make them a tournament team. This doesn't make them a second weekend team. This doesn't even put them on the level of LSU and Florida uh, Florida and Mississippi State in the middle of the SEC, let alone the top. So all I will say, I will wrap by saying, I wish this kid nothing but luck. I'm not saying he made the wrong decision. He made the decision that was best for him. But can we stop with the, oh, you know, South Carolina. Oh, you got to watch out for South Carolina. No, you don't. They're still going to stink. And again, if I was him, I would have advised him, wait a year. Don't rush the process. You're only 17 years old. Go to Carolina. Ball out around other good players. That's what I would have done.